All right, guys, welcome back to Decoding Babylon. And we got a real treat today. I say that almost every episode, but we always do. We got a special guest again with Brian and I in studio. We got Vitaly from Alpha Talks on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, probably more. But anyways, Vitaly, uh, I did his show like a couple weeks ago or like a month ago now, and I couldn't wait to have him on. Welcome to the show, Vitaly. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, so we so the topic today is... If you, have, if you guys don't follow Alpha Talks on YouTube, you guys should probably just go subscribe right now. He's got some some very mind-bending videos about melted mountains. He talks about the possibility that we're in the we are in the short season of Satan. And I think a lot of people have been asking those questions lately, whether they're going like going down the Tataria rabbit <laughs> hole or they're or they're just like questioning everything because you realize we've been lied to about everything. So Vitaly, the question is. Have we been lied to about where we are on the biblical timeline? so 100 percent, we've been lied to virtually about everything and that's why i think everyone needs to become a clean slate and look at scripture you know like a child like jesus said to really know what's going on in the, in the bible it even says to become a fool so that you may become wise so like whatever preconceived notions we got from church the secular world we got to get rid of it and just start all over because that's the only way to know what's true right yeah that's a, that's a good point i remember I, I think brian and i were were talking recently and i was saying being intellectually honest and not just not just believing what we just hope to be true right now, knowing the devil is, is crafty, knowing the devil's smarter than us, like in, and also just like me being aware of that in Revelation where it's like so. I gave you guys aren't aware in in Revelation. There's the Battle of Armageddon, the Antichrist and the false prophet are cast in the lake of fire. Satan is bound, and then he's put in the bottomless pit, and then there's millennial reign depending on if you believe it's a thousand years literally or it's like an indefinite amount of time but then toward the end somewhere satan is let loose and he deceives the nations again he's let out for a and little I, while oh and i yeah and yeah he was he's allowed to deceive the nations for a little while and i and that always did trip me up like i don't understand why that's uh -huh. in there why is god letting him out why is that happening how is he going to deceive the nations again and then so like in, to be intellectually honest considering that I guess you have to imagine if he for in order for him to be able to deceive the nations again, it's got to be a massive deception. It's got to be something that, you know, being humble that you could fall for. We have to question every single little thing. And that includes the timeline, where we are, what we are, where biblical locate or biblical events actually happened. Right. Like the secular world, the church tells us here's where the Bible took place, but maybe it took place somewhere else entirely. So. I think we should question everything because if the devil is the prince of this earth, that means he owns virtually everything, right? History, educational sectors, the seminary schools. So it's wise to question all of it. So, wh so when did you start questioning these things? Because I think that that's like that's a like that's an interesting part. Because like I've been like Brian and I have been peeling back the onion, and like we are kind of arriving at this time, and it looks like you got there a little bit sooner. That where we're just asking these questions if we're not sure yet. So a couple of years ago, I always had the kind of, I guess, desire to look into things and see what's true and what's not and where we are. And I started reading scripture like a clean. So I started looking at everything like a clean slate. Right. I'm going to forget what church told me, school, everything. And I started to read the Bible and I noticed some things that have never been talked about. There's a few topics in scripture that's not brought up often in church. One of them is cosmology. Another thing is timeline, and there's a bunch of other topics, but the timeline is very interesting. Where we are, what took place, what didn't take place. And so I was reading the book of Matthew, and I'm going to pull up a few verses. And um, do you remember the, uh, I think it was Mount Olive where Jesus was giving, or talking to his disciples, right? And he tells them mm -hmm. what's to come. Mm -hmm. 
during Armageddon and what's to come right before his return. And then after mm -hmm. that conversation, after he addresses the disciples, he says in Matthew 24, 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, he uses the word this generation as in he's talking to them, right? Like present, current generation. Yeah. And all throughout scripture, anytime it uses the word this, it's always in reference to something present or near in time, right? It's kind of like me saying mm -hmm. this generation is going downhill. Am I talking about something a couple thousand years into the future? And am I talking about our generation? Our generation, right? And then I decided yeah. to look into other scriptures that possibly use that saying or that phrase, this generation. And I found one in Genesis 7, 1, I believe. Let me go find it real quick. Yeah. And so Genesis 7, 1, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou in all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. So when you read this, you don't think to yourself, this is talking about a generation in the future, right? You're like, Noah's mm -hmm, generation. Right. There's the context. God said this, which implies the present generation. So right. when a lot of churches yeah. read Matthew 24, 34, they look at it and they say, well, that's not talking about this generation as incurring. Mm -hmm. You know, they start allegorizing and adding to scripture. That's talking about the future generation. I'm like, he could have used the word that generation. And aside from that, there's a bunch of other verses that backs up that Jesus meant what he said. You know, it wasn't a parable. He didn't say this is a parable or. He wasn't speaking in code. He was addressing the disciples. And I found more verses concerning that. Let me find it real quick. I know in Matthew 23, I believe, he's talking directly to the Pharisees. And he's saying, you guys are going to face judgment. Yes. And then, and then so right after that, the, he talks about the temple who, being destroyed. He said, who warned you, right, too? I just know he says, I just know he, he directly, he's, he's talking directly to them and he's saying, you guys are going to face this judgment that's coming. Yes. And then he starts talking about the temple being destroyed. Yep. So it's kind of like, so when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, that he's talking, he's obviously talking to them because then if you know what happened in 70 AD, that the temple was destroyed, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. And I think that that's what, I think this is why this happens. And like, obviously there's a good conversation to have, whether you agree or not. That so many people have tried to say, well, he couldn't be talking about this generation because obviously these things have not happened yet because we don't believe that they have. Yeah. But mm -hmm. at, at the same time, like mm -hmm. his, he did like mm -hmm. he was pretty prophetic and things did happen. So we already know that certain things happened that he was specifically talking about. Yeah, and there's a bunch of verses to back up the claim that he meant what he said. He's talking to his disciples like check out. Matthew 16, 27, where the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom, which is the second coming, right? And then there is, mm -hmm. let me see, Matthew, Matthew 24, 33. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. He's talking about Armageddon. Verily I say unto mm -hmm. you, this generation shall not pass. I've already read that. So all these things be fulfilled. So again, he was talking to his disciples. He's not talking to a generation in the future. Because it'd be a little confusing because the disciples are asking him about Armageddon. Like, what shall we expect? You know, what's going to happen? He's addressing them. Mm -hmm. He tells them, your generation is not going to die till all this is fulfilled. And then here's a verse in Matthew, verse uh, chapter ten, verse twenty-three. But when they persecute you, and but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Again, right? He's saying not to go <laughs> over these cities till I return, till I come. And uh, here's Hebrews yeah. one two: Hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. There's so many verses. You'd have to overlook all of these verses to suggest that he wasn't talking to his disciples. Like, here's more. Um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Why is he telling them it's the last time? If it's for like thousands of years into the future, what is the point of that? Like it is the last time, right? 
Yeah. He'd be confusing them or lying to them, but he doesn't lie, right? So, right. What is it? Also, also think about it in the book of Acts when when he ascends and the two angels are like, what are you guys looking at? You got, It's like, you're going to see him descend the same way he went up. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's almost like, it's almost like you guys better get, get to work because he's coming back soon. And if you think about it too, like even the parable of the, the ma- he's, you know, all the parables of a master went on a trip. Yeah. And so like, he's like literally leaving them, you know, like the, the master is, they see him, he goes. And then that same master comes back to those same people it's kind of like I gave you these things and what have you done with what I, you know, when, when, when I leave them, whoever I put in charge of my flock, like, like Peter and them, if somebody does what they're supposed to, they're feeding the sheep as they're supposed to. And it's like, but if they're not, I'll be back with the sword. Yeah. That was another thing he said was like, when he was talking to, I believe it was Peter and John or whatever he said, what is it to you if he stays alive till I come again? And that was a statement Jesus said, um, to, uh, I believe John was it when he and he was or to Peter when he was asking him about it. He was like basically telling Peter, "You're going to get crucified, but but what is it mm-hmm. to you if I keep him alive till I come again?" So he's going to stay alive till Jesus shows up again. Kind of weird. Yeah, like why would he do that? Does that does that li- that lines up with was it Matthew 17 talking about the transfiguration? When he's like, "Truly I say to you, one of you, like some of you will not see death until you see the son of man coming on his glory. And it's like, so obviously John was there. Yeah. And what's even crazier, there's something even more simple that adds to this. And it's found in the book of Mark. And uh, it's basically Jesus having a conversation with the priest, uh, Caffius, I think his name is right. The Pharisees, I believe. Is it Caffius? Mm. Caffius? Uh, uh, close enough. Yeah, but in uh, it's this is Matthew chapter 14, verse 61. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And then Jesus replies and says, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So he tells the priest, you're going to see me coming in the clouds of heaven, right? It's been a thousand or two thousand years. He's dead, right? What does yeah. that mean? He saw him. Possible. <laughs> what about yeah? What about even in Zechariah when it's saying they're going to see who they pierce and they're going to mourn? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it's like, it's kind of like the that verse, like trying to be shoehorned into now. It's like who's going to see who they pierced? It's mental gymnastics. The people who pierce, like, like the Roman, like obviously the Romans, the 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 Pharisees, the Jews who who set him up. It's like that, like I said, that that does lose kind of all impact when you realize like it has so much more impact if it's like the people who crucified him are literally going to see him coming back down and like, oh no, <laughs> like yeah, right. And again, there's more verses. There's even more. You have to look overlook all these verses and add to them right you can either read it as is or you'd have to interpret it to say something else entirely right so like reading in matthew where jesus said this generation shall not pass you'd have to add that generation shall not pass future generation so here is uh let's see romans chapter 13 verse 11 and that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation near than when we believed. Revelation twenty two twelve. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. So again, aside from scripture, there's physical evidence to show that something crazy happened in our past, right? Why is it that every ancient structure, specifically the structures that were used during the time of Christ, you know, Roman structures, the bathhouses, the temples, why are they all in ruin? Why are they buried? Why are the temples destroyed, right? You can even go to some of the churches that John addressed in Revelation, and you can find temples being buried 20, 30 feet below the ground. And I talk about this in one of my videos. But you go to one of these churches or the location of it, and you see temples destroyed, collapsed, buried 20, 30 feet underground. And uh, there's something called soil liquefaction. It's when an earthquake is really powerful, and it's able to turn the ground into quicksand, causing things to sink, right? We're constantly digging up Roman bathhouses to this day. I forgot where they were trying to build a subway. I don't know if it's in Spain, but it was like a big subway project and they can't build it because they continue to dig up these subways, right? And now it's just 
archaeological history. They can't like destroy it or anything. But <laughs> all over Europe, they're continuing to dig up a bunch of bathhouses. And, and like really completely buried. Isn't that weird? Like what happened for them to sink that low? Isn't that kind of like where I know like what they told they told us in school and stuff that there's certain things the Romans knew and they did, but we don't know how they did it. Now, and I always go, I was like, wait a minute, didn't the Romans like write everything down? I mean, like that was like, like, so how does, was that? Cause that's the one thing never made sense to me is like, cause obviously we know that Rome was more than the city. Cause obviously Rome was ruled the, ruled the whole like modern world. Yeah. So they had, they would have had their governors or their people who they installed all over these big cities. I don't think a lot of people realize like Paris was a Roman city. It wasn't a French city. The, the Romans built Paris, you know, and London, Londinium and all these mm -hmm. places. They actually were in charge there. So how did all these things the Romans did get forgotten? Maybe something really bad happened and those people died. You know, like that, mm -hmm. that, that might make sense. Maybe the Dark Ages were yeah. so dark. Isn't it interesting? The Dark Ages are about a thousand years, right? Uh -huh. Well, that's what I actually do. It's funny because my my wife, mm -hmm. we we were talking about that. Actually, it was funny. We, Brian and I, as as we can get into this in a little bit, we were hiking around that valley of fire in in like just outside of Las Vegas. Insane place. And of course, she's she's going taking a long trip down the rabbit hole when she says, I think I need to research the Dark Ages more. So I said, so I said, should I ask should I ask Vitaly about the Dark Ages? So yeah, what do you think about the Dark Ages? Where we have we been lied to about? What happened then? Well, the devil always likes to play the game of opposites, all right? like with cosmology, for example. The Bible says the earth is still over 50 times, and we're told it moves, even though our senses don't even tell us, right? Uh, God mm -hmm. says that the sky is solid. It's a glass ceiling. The sky is the limit, literally. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're mm -hmm. told that, no, it, it, it's vapor. You could just go through it. So he always plays the game mm -hmm. of opposites. So if the world tells us the dark ages are dark, Maybe they're not. Maybe they're light ages, right? Because think about it. It's They tell us that Rome was destroyed over the course of, I don't know, like 100, 200 years, right? Because of barbarians, and financial collapse and all that. Well, people debate. Actually, that, I, was, I, read, I read a book about Rome not that long ago. And there's historians don't ever agree when Rome fell. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, some people like question it between like, it's like... I mean, hundreds of years they debate on whether, it, like, or the it reason fell. Like, why that it seems fell. strange, yeah. right? Yeah, they have the yeah. The, it, it's all over the map on what actually happened with Rome, and I think that that seems sus. It is. Like, why are these buildings buried? Why are the temples destroyed? Did the barbarians have some kind of earthquake technology and they just leveled the city, right? <laughs> or did something happen? Mm -hmm. It's fascinating when you right. find the Roman architecture all the way in the United States and you see it throughout the world, like our White House, like the White House in, in America. Have you seen those old photos where it's just like this, this pillar Roman looking architectural, perfect White House nothing and then around, nothing yeah. around it. And you're like, what is that? And it's and we're called the founding. Yeah, we're called the founding fathers. And you're almost like, wait, did they did they find this? Is that why they're called the Founding Fathers? Because it looks like Roman architecture in the middle of nothingness. Are you talking about the the Lincoln Memorial? Uh, no, just the White House. If you look up old photos of the White House, no. Okay, so they call it they call this like a oh, it was like an artistic style, and now it's like a museum that you can walk around. Oh, look, they purposely put up these destroyed temples for aesthetic purposes, right? Uh -huh. And that's kind of their reasoning as to why these exist all throughout America or existed. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. I remember a channel, um, Conspiracy R Us. Have you watched that channel before? Uh, no. He talks a lot about this kind of stuff that some kind of Armageddon like event possibly happened in our past. And he goes really, really deep into it. And he shows a lot of interesting evidence. Mm. Like in the book of Peter's, remember when Jesus said that um, the earth will be destroyed with fervent heat, right? That's right. The cities shall melt, yeah. and all the structures and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, there is something called, I think it's called Dark Earth. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh -uh. you can find a lot of the stuff all throughout the amazon it's basically a big layer of dirt that is super fertile and it can only be created through intense heat of plant matter huh. um biological oh matter, i have heard something like this I, I know you're talking about yeah so for that intense heat to happen it would have to be crazy crazy intense right and it same thing i mean think about things like how does charcoal form mm. what is charcoal or coal Burn. specifically Burn it's matter. from intense heat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Burning of plant matter and whatnot. So 
what kind of event happened for charcoal and dark earth to form? Because they say that about one third of our earth is covered in this dark earth material. And what does the Bible say? What will happen to one third of the earth? Huh. Right. Be burned. Right. Then be burned. So yeah, look in the dark earth. That's very interesting right there. Yeah, it's yeah, that's interesting. I've I've wondered this too. Is like even if like if you read the some of the prophecies of the judgments on certain places, like in the Middle East, and then you just look at these places and they're these wastelands. And obviously God says people are going to be appalled when they see they walk by. Only it's only jackals and at screech owls and and obviously demons are going to haunt these places. Nothing's mm-hmm. going to grow there. And then you look at like place like you know like in Egypt, and you're like, do people really think that they built those things in some kind of just desert? I mean, oh. or do you think that that place was lush? Even in, even the book of Genesis mentions uh, Egypt being lush. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then so you, so you look at these scorched earth, and if you look at like on a map where the deserts of the world are, they kind of are in this band. Even like in America, like, and I think that's kind of where I started to go with this idea of like that you go out to Arizona and you go out to Utah and you go all these places. And it's like the geological uh, experts, their, their takes on how this happened, like the Grand Canyon being caused by the Colorado river and, and these weird structures being caused by like wind and rain. And you're like, this looks like, I mean, what I could imagine as some kind of a nuclear disaster, like that literally caused rocks to melt and just form in like mushroom shapes. Mm and like weird ho- nicks and holes like yeah like yeah. melt like they melted like wax like what the the day of the lord's described as uh. i mean go to places like cappadocia turkey ever heard of that place i've heard of cappadocia um i think i think so yeah they discovered um an underground city i think a couple decades ago yes you heard of that right and the city is able yeah. to house like twenty thousand people and they continue to find unbelievable this, right unbelievable so on top of this city on top of the earth you know above it uh, they find these weird rock formations. You can find towers that look like, uh, or, or rock formations that look like castle towers. Uh, I'm talking a yeah. bunch of them set up like this mm-hmm. with the little umbrellas on top, and they tell us like a volcano formed that. Uh-huh. And all throughout Cappadocia, you find these weird structures that look like they melted. But it looks like melted ice cream, uh-huh. right? So look at that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've seen those. I, I actually I put up my pictures. So I had a bunch of things called chimney rocks, and there was a bunch chimney of places rock, like that. Yeah, that's the name of it. Chimney yeah, rock. chimney ro- chimney rocks, and it's like that. Those things, for one, they look very phallic. If they weren't, you know, yeah, they were yeah. like some fer- fer- fertility thing. But it's like, but that's just like the idea that those things weathered that way, all the yeah. same. Uh-huh. That's a rock. That's just a rock formation that they carve holes into. Apparently, huh. look at that. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's like I said, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. And uh, another thing that's super interesting, have you guys ever heard of the um, Lichtenberg figures? Uh-uh. Oh, no, I have not. OK, let me show you. It's um, it's a pattern that's caused by uh, like electrical scarring. Oh, I actually I saw in your video about that, about how yeah, how electricity, how it kind of burns out. Yeah, yeah. And it yes, causes yes, these yes, patterns, yes. right? Um, mm-hmm. So like, for example, this would be a Lichtenberg figure. In like, oh, okay. a, like yeah, a glass yeah. cube, right? You 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 put um a bunch of volts of electricity into it, and it forms these patterns. I got it, I got it, I got it. Anyway, when you go above the Earth, or you look at satellite type images above the like Earth, mountain ranges. you can see electrical scarring patterns all across. Yeah, it looks like mountains. Like if you go mountains and whatnot, and it legit looks like a lightning bolt hit the ground, and then started causing these weird patterns, uh-huh. or electrical scar like patterns. And um, what's really interesting, let me find the uh, Grand Canyon plane view. You find stuff like this all throughout the earth. Uh, Just like electrical stuff. Yeah, that looks, that looks exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And look what the Bible says about God's destruction. All right, this is going to be Psalms 97, verse 4. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the whole earth. Huh. So his lightnings enlighten the world. And what do you see all across the world? You see these electrical scarring patterns. And again, you see melted rock looking things. And it all legit looks like fire, like the Valley of Fire. You guys have been there and you look all around. Mm -hmm. It does not look natural at all. Uh Even the... It all looked melted. It all looked like it had been melted. It was just, it was really weird. I mean, all the Midwest and America, the, the rock itself, it looks like the type of stuff the Egyptians would use for their structures, you know, like, like red brick and... Mm-hmm. It has a lot of iron right because of the oxidization and whatnot. 
So all throughout the Bible, it talks about the earth melting. I mean, we see an example of this in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because this is not like a one-time situation. Uh -huh. The book of Hebrews even tells us that God is a consuming fire. And throughout Sodom and Gomorrah, what are we told? Like the same thing happened, right? Their cities melted. So what would a melted city look like? What would Sodom and Gomorrah look like? A bunch of rock formations, right? With maybe we'll see some 90-degree angles or pockets of survival and whatnot. Uh, well, that's yeah. interesting because like because I I've seen like the 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 archaeologists apologetic people saying where Sodom and Gomorrah was, but they really just show a desert and they show like uh, like sulfur and salt and it's like yeah so where was the city at because it's like I mean I imagine that the, the fire could have been hot enough to, to I mean you think there would have been something left of the rocks that were like to use because because I think probably back in those days. I bet you saw Adam and Gamora was probably some megalithic city. You know, well, it looks like, like a bunch of mountains that have been melted around that area. Yeah. That's what it actually does look like that. Yeah. I mean, God sending fire yeah. in the earth. It happened a bunch of times throughout. Scripture. It straight looks like there's a mountain there that looks like it could have been a temple right in the middle of all that. And it just looks totally melted. And you're like, yeah, you're to it totally looks like that. And you're like, hmm, that's a rock. And you're like, that's pretty weird rock. It looks like a building almost. And so there's some stuff around there. There's a crazy one. I think I, I think it's in Isaiah. I want to say mm -hmm. they was uh, proclaiming the destruction of Zoan and 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 like I guess that was like what they believe was Tanis, like the the capital of Egypt. And that one, have you ever seen the pictures of that, Brian? Uh -uh. Like that's obviously obviously was something that happened a long time uh -huh. ago. But like there are these megaliths, megalithic stones. There's statues. Like there's a foot of a statue. It's probably like six foot long. You ever seen oh, that? I mean, and it's like, and, it, and it's uh, like this place looked like like a kid just knocked over his toys, and then these uh -huh. things are half of these things are gone. And it's like there yeah. is no other explanation other than there is this place, and then God said this place was going to be destroyed, and it's like these things are scorched. There's like mega, yeah, like like the, it was obviously the, it was a it was a very popular place, and I think they tr I think archaeologists tried to put some of the the things back together somewhat. But it's mm -hmm. like it's ridiculous how how obviously that was the power of God did that. You'd be surprised at the amount of times God says the word melt in the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> like, check this out. Ezekiel verse 22, cha oh, chapter 22, verse 20. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury and I will leave you there and melt you. Yeah, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. And again, all throughout scripture, we see this, right? Like fire coming down out of the heavens. The uh, wasn't the when Moses was crossing the Red Sea, pillar of fire. he sent a fiery pillar, right? Yeah, pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. What happens at the end of Revelations when they try to surround the camp with the it's saints? Burned with fire. It's burned by fire. Fire. Look, what Hebrews says, for our God is a consuming fire. Yeah, that, he comes down as fire. Yeah, I think that's fascinating. I think the the fact that you see the rock structures all throughout the world, the megalithic rock structures, all knocked over and destroyed. You you got to be blind to not recognize that some type of oh, yeah. cataclysmic event happened because these rocks we can't even move yet they're on their face like I just looked at the that one place you were talking about uh, JT and it was just like literally they're like on their face like falling over giant megalithic structures clearly a massive earthquake a massive massive earthquake to knock these stones completely off their face and it's crazy because everywhere in Egypt it's like that everywhere all over the world where you see megalithic structures. It's all knocked over. It's all collapsed. It's all like, who pushed this stuff over? Who went around and said, hey, let's push over that giant brick wall? Like, like, yeah, what kind of barbarians were just knocking them down yeah, and no. just like, let's, let's waste our energy and yeah, just like destroy yeah, them. You know, yeah, like, why don't you just build on top of it? Like, clearly it was being, it was knocked over. And it's almost indicative of the fact that like God, I think in that moment when he shook the earth and tore the veil and stuff, he might have knocked down everything in that moment in the entire world, or it could have been something thereafter, right? You know, it could have been like, we, we just don't know because we don't have that time constraint yeah. understanding, but like God knocked this stuff over. It's definitely a looking like a judgment of God when you see these ruins. Have you guys ever been to Bryce Canyon? Uh, uh, no, I have. Where's where that at exactly? I believe it's in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's in I Arizona. I knew the name sounded familiar because I think we were looking all over. You guys got to visit it. It legit looks like a city. It's just, you'd have to be blind not to see mm. it. Like there's so many of these structures, 
there are things that look like they used to be idols or something. Like you got little head yes, shape. Yes, there's um, that. That was like when we, uh, the wife and I went to Sedona, and and I think that that's what I was making the connections. And I curse, I still got to make my Sedona video because I was saying that I think there's this clear pattern, and I think that the 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 Indians and Native Americans talked about Sedona being this magical city. Well, like that's where they believe it was, and there seems mm-hmm. there seems something like there's some correlation between the red rocks and yeah like so you see places like petra obviously then you see like like yeah stuff the egyptians were making out of red rocks and then you see so the these places in america to the indians they were all very spiritually significant for some reason and they're always red and so like what like what is the deal with that but from my eyes when we're in sedona there was like a clear mountain and then there was this red thing on top of it that no longer had its normal shape, but it used to look like something and it doesn't anymore. And I think, and that's what I looked at. I said, that looks like that was destroyed. That's what it looks like. It looks like a destroyed yeah. building. So I just showed you Bryce Canyon. Now check it out from plain view. Oh, oh, wow. It's lightning. lightning in the world. Wow. Right? The earth saw and trembled. Check this out. Check it out higher. Dang, it looks just like it. It's an electrical pattern coming towards these rock formations and then it looks just fried and... <laughs> It's not like the whole place is full of red rocks. It's just this area, right? Like, look at the area. Look at the, the earth around it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And again, the scripture tells us what happens. And when people would be surprised that, you know, like, you're supposed to question every single little thing, even rocks. <laughs> like, <laughs> question rocks themselves. Because as you can see, there's something funky about these rock formations. You know, geologists tell us, oh, this was the unprovable time scale of millions of billions of years of erosion and whatnot. They say that the grand Canyon was formed by a river erosion. And there are other rivers throughout the world that they claim that are older than the grand Canyon yet. They don't form any type of valley. It's just a river. Well, even I saw, I saw an old, uh, was it Kent Hovind video? And he was saying like, how did the Colorado river? Cause he's like, because it starts up in Montana and it would literally have to go uphill it is so wide, 270 miles, that you don't notice it until you get way back and look at it from a satellite. But if you look at it in a cross section, this schematic shows the difference here. The river enters right here and flows downhill and comes out the other side. It's actually going through a giant ridge, 270 miles long. At the highest point of the ridge, the river's at about 1,800 foot elevation, so it's nearly a one mile drop down into the canyon. Really big hole in the ground. I said, now, sir, there are a couple things you ought to consider about Grand Canyon. I said, did you know <clears throat> the top of Grand Canyon is higher than the bottom? <clears throat> he said, uh, yes. I said, sir, did you know the river runs through the bottom? He said, yes. I said, sir, did you know the top is higher than where the river enters the canyon by over 4,000 feet? I said, sir, did you know that rivers don't flow uphill? So the Colorado River went through the higher Opposite rock direction. Yeah. It just it just no, cut just no. cut right through it like a like a hot knife through butter. Where'd all the water go? Like, I mean, it's wouldn't that be a lot more water than <laughs> that would be there since it's, no. since it's like pretty much drained? Yeah, the water didn't cause it. I can disprove it. There are um within the Grand Canyon there are cross sections, meaning they form like this, right? Mm-hmm. Water takes the path of least resistance. Right, right. right. How is it possible it can form a cross pattern unless it was some kind of electricity that did something and then the water came down from the rains and whatnot, right? Right. And that's actually my my kind of question is how did rivers form to begin with? Right. Was it an earthquake opening it up or did some kind of big old lightning bolt just form these patterns and allow water? Well, it's it's interesting that a lot of of rivers, and I think I I can't remember reading this somewhere, they actually talked about people being able to make them actually making rivers. And you notice all like the serpentine patterns. Yeah, because you're like, if water takes the path of least resistance, why is there so many rivers that are, that literally like -like? snake-like? Because that doesn't really seem like water would find that the most, uh, you know, efficient way to run. Yeah. Like all throughout the Grand Canyon, they claim that, there are riverbeds and they intersect and that doesn't make sense because water only takes the path of least resistance. So it just forms in a, a, a crooked line, right? All the way down. But you see a crossing, you see a bunch of empty riverbeds just like 
in intersections like that. Well, so it doesn't make sense for it to be walked. Well, as as we're talking about the Grand Canyon, this might be a good time to talk about this. So if you if you go to the Grand Canyon, there's a temple to Isis, there's a temple to Osiris. I think there's like a Tower of Ra. There is a temple to Shiva in there. There's what they named these places. Yeah, there's yeah. a temple to Solomon. There is uh, what else is there? There's there's multiple. There's so many like pagan gods represented in there, and they're literally calling them temples. And for what we're supposed to believe is, yeah, yeah what we're I, supposed to believe I, is, I just, is that that Pal, the guy I guess like Pal's named after, just said, let's just name it that. This is like these majestic places. So so the real question is, Vitaly, are they named that? Because that's what they used to be. They actually used to be like the Temple of Isis. Is it possible that that this this Egyptian stuff is here because Egypt was actually here? I think it's very possible. And another thing that I'm starting to kind of believe or be open to is that Pangea was real, but it didn't happen that long ago. So kind of like uh, one of the reasons people denied the whole uh, view that you know Armageddon already happened is in Revelations, it says that the mountains and the islands will be moved from their place, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. But what if the earth during Christ's time was one landmass? And that's how they were able to spread the gospel, right? They didn't have to sail somewhere super far. They were able to spread it all over the earth. And there's evidence that the gospel was spread as far as ancient China. And I talk about it in a video, in my Armageddon video. And um, uh, in, in the Bible, it talks about all the islands and stuff being moved. So what if Pangea happened not that long ago? And the earth separated because you can fit all the continents into one piece like a puzzle right like south america goes with africa like this and it's all like connected uh-huh. so i think it's uh-huh. possible that egypt was a massive like empire and it had kind of like we have military bases all over the world i think they had empires all throughout the world including places like grand canyon and they had a lot of influence and another thing is um I believe that it's possible that part of Egypt could have also been in Texas because this is really weird, but throughout the Bible, it talks about Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus and the disciples ate corn on the Sabbath? Uh, Uh, Some some verses say grain. Right. Well, I think, I think I I remember reading that. Maybe I remember it was my, might've been your video. And there was yours. Like, I think you were saying like picking the heads off of wheat and eating it. It's not like people didn't need do. You wouldn't do that. Like you could, yeah. I said, yeah. I, like you I wouldn't thought, just yeah. eat the tops of the wheat off, like just just straight up. Like it may, it would actually make more sense if it was something like corn that you could just. It's bad for the stomach to just eat raw grains, right? So if you were, if you read that verse and, and you think that corn means grains, that means Jesus and the disciples were nibbling on like raw wheat, which is not good for you. It's not good for your stomach. Mm. And what the verse actually says is corn. And let me uh, find the verse real quick. What translation says corn? It's, King James. Oh, the King James says huh. corn. Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. At the time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn, the ears of corn, and to eat it. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do what that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. So it says that he ate corn, like ears huh. of corn, basically. And there's a bunch of verses mentioning corn. And what's interesting is there are some hieroglyphs in Egypt that depict something that literally looks like corn, mm. like a corn on the cob mm. in their little basket. But corn is only indigenous to the Americas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all throughout scripture, it talks about Jesus eating corn. And then there's another scripture that says that uh, the Israelites were eating parched corn. If you look up what parched corn is, that's corn nuts. Huh. That's like roasted corn nuts. That's what parched really? corn is. But what's interesting is that some people think that, oh, corn is another word for grain. Well, the Bible uses the word grain throughout Scripture, so clearly there's right. some kind of distinction. Yeah, grains, and corn. Well, um, I know, right? what, there's a there's a fact. There, here's one you can a very provable conspiracy about the corn. As you ever heard in uh, so Roslyn Chapel is I think it believe it's in is in Scotland, and that's a place where like the Freemasonry stuff is like crazy, like the Knights Templar stuff. Well, they've got like yeah. carvings inside the church, the church predates 1492 there's corn all over like the like they actually have like depictions of corn all over the place like maize like the stuff from supposedly that would only they'd be able to only get in the new world Uh and so like yeah so that like that's that's literally carved into 
the stone inside the, the church. And you're like, yeah. okay, so obviously I think that most people at this point have probably recognized that, that at least the Vikings probably got over to North America, that we don't believe the compass was the first. But obviously that's, ins- I mean, it, it, it's hard to wrap. I think it's really hard for people to wrap their minds around that that stuff almost, it sounds like straight from the book of Mormon, like that. But don't, don't, yeah, yeah, that's what some don't people think- accuse me of. They're like, are you a Mormon or something? These are Mormon ideas. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'm looking into this, the possibility that we've been lied to about locations. I mean, we should, again, question every little thing. You know, it's, I'm not saying I 100 percent believe it, but I'm open to it. It's interesting because, it, you know, it does say a third of the earth will be burned and a third of it will be flooded. Right. Doesn't it say mm-hmm. flood? OK, so like there is a whole missing component between Africa and and South America. There's actually like what they thought was potentially where it sank underground. And it was like a, another piece of land mass that potentially could have been where, you know, Atlantis or whatever, whatever third continent they believe had like sunk and, and fell in. And it's like, there could be a whole nother component there too. I mean, like the earth is what two it's one third land, right? So like there could yeah. have been more land potentially. It just got flooded and destroyed. Atlantis type, you know, yeah, yeah, got, yeah. And then it's gone now. And so we don't even know, like, hmm. Well, even go back to the even going back all the way to Genesis, I was I was just doing that Genesis one video when I was saying if you take it literally, it's saying that like God obviously caused the expanse, formed the ferment, and then he told the other water to gather, and then the earth was exposed. And if you think about like just the, just what that says, you would actually kind of view it more like the middle would have been where the earth the earth was. And all the water been, would have been surrounding. It. it was funny, even I was just reading in Exodus. And I think this is like, this is obviously why people get into like the biblical cosmology. Because what the Bible says, it was actually saying that when God was telling, like given the Ten Commandments, he was saying, do not carve anything from heaven. Do not carve anything from in the earth. And do not carve anything from the water that's under the earth. And you're like, it didn't say just the seas like he's saying he said the water under the earth because he actually said in the earth, the water under it and then the, the heaven above it. And it's like so like, yeah, think about pushing the water out. And now, yeah, like the idea of like when they said, I mean, just think about it like this. Obviously, whether you're a flat earth or not, when the when the Bible describes the ends of the earth. It would actually make sense whether not that there's an edge, not that there's edge you could fall off, but if if the sea actually did surround the whole thing, well, literally it would be the end of the earth. I mean, obviously the the end, the earth ends and then there's the sea and there's nothing, there's nothing to go get after that. And it's like, that's, it's kind of crazy to think that that could be literal because yeah, they could actually travel the, you know, travel by foot or by donkey or horse and they could get to the ends of the earth. I think originally the earth probably looked like an eyeball, you know, with the iris and the pupil and everything like you have, the North Pole lands in the middle, and then the rest of the Earth and the waters. Ooh, the ice wall. Yeah, could that be why they rep they rep the eyeball everywhere too? Is that like that? That's what it used to look like. I have no idea. Maybe, but yeah, I, I think Pangaea was possible, and it didn't happen millions of years ago. It happened not that long. Brian, ago. were you asking about uh, the North Pole? Yeah, the North Pole would have been the center of the uh, the where the Garden of Eden was, which is actually a, the Axis Mundi. Yeah, yep, people have some middle. thoughts about that. There's some theories out there about something related to that. Yeah, what are your thoughts on what are your yeah. thoughts on uh, Black Rock? Is that what you, do you have you heard that the Black Rock that that's actually what was that's what the magnetic North is is this magnetic yeah. mountain in the that's actually the North Pole. I think Eden is not connected to the earth anymore. I think black rock is the tree of life severed because it talks about it in the book of Daniel when he has a vision, I believe of um, an angel coming down and, and cutting this humongous we're, tree that reached. Up we were just, heaven. we were just talking about that, that Nebuchadnezzar had the, had the dream and he was the tree that got chopped down. And obviously that was bound with bronze and with iron. The stump was, le- the yeah. stump was left. And that, I think it was also literal. I mean, there's too many details in the vision. Like an angel came down, chopped it down. Like the branches were able to, you know, feed all the creatures of the earth. And I think that's what black rock is. I think it's a tree stump that, you know, now looks like a black rock. That is interesting. Cause we, you know, the funny part about it, me and Brian were just, we just, we literally just talked about this. And I it said, it's funny because it's like, okay, so he has this vision of like a tree. And then it mentions that he's going to be turned into a beast. 
Well, we know that part happens because it says right afterwards, but it's like, so like, it's interesting that the tree part would only be a dream when actually the crazier part is the fact that Nebuchadnezzar basically turns into some kind of werewolf for like, like, what do they say? Seven periods of time or something like that, whatever. What kind of animal, yeah. yeah. Very, like very bizarre. And like, that is like, that is literal. Like, cause that, cause yeah. it says it happens. I think churches allegorize things too much instead of reading it as is. Mm-hmm. I think the Bible, if you're a clean slate, it's very simple. Like to understand the Bible, you have to have the faith of a child, mm-hmm. right? You can't overcomplicate it because Jesus tells you what he's saying. For example, like when he says a parable, he literally tells you like, yeah, here's the parable of the fig tree or of the king and whatnot. You can read it as is. The Bible tells you what's a metaphor, what's not, what's to be taken literal or what's to be taken all of the above, right? Mm-hmm. This is literal, this is a metaphor, right? So it's, I think the scriptures are very simple. And that's why, like I told you in the beginning, I just started reading it like a clean slate and I just got this like new understanding, right? Like thanks to the Holy Spirit. Because again, the Bible says the spirit of truth will lead us if we let it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's not a possessing spirit like a demon. The Holy Spirit doesn't force you to do anything. Mm-hmm. It just guides you if you want it. If you don't want it, it's not going to touch you, bother you. Uh-huh. But again, that's why the Bible says that God opposes, you know, the proud and shows grace to the humble. So if you humble yourself like a child and you're willing to admit that you're a fool and you don't know anything, uh-huh. which everyone should admit yeah. this, uh-huh. yeah. right? Just because your pastor got a PhD and whatever doesn't mean he knows everything. Uh-huh. My little sister knows more about certain parts of the Bible than some pastors with PhDs. I'm sure. Right. And I mean, think about Jesus. Who did he pick, you know, for the disciples? They're just basic dudes. They weren't like, uh, you know, scholars or anything like that. Peter was like a fisherman, right? You're just normal people. Yeah. Mo- yeah. And multiple of them were, were fishermen, tax collector. Yeah, they were, um, yeah, 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 they were not people that obviously, I, rabbis, they he obviously people. did that on purpose because obviously if he had to pick the fa- pick Pharisees, if everybody's like Paul, then I think most people would say, well, I can't understand this stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. but he didn't pick those guys. But also simple people like that are, are more humble than somebody with like a PhD. Not to say they can't be humble, but somebody with a PhD or a rabbi who's been in the schools right during Jesus's time. And he knows every little thing about the Torah and whatnot. Uh, they're more less likely to be humble and admit that they don't know everything. Mm-hmm. That's, right? that's a good point. And they'll hang on to a view that they've been taught versus somebody as simple as a fisherman like Peter. They're more likely to be humble. Like, well, I don't know this or that, right? Okay, so I got I got a question, and I think a lot of people will probably want to have this question. And this is a this is a legitimate question by me. I'm not sure the answer. Okay, so let's just say, yes, Armageddon happened. That's that's the, the evidence is the melted things. A lot of people would say, and I actually asked this question. I remember saying this when somebody, I got questioned about Tataria this way. I said, "Well, then where is Jesus at?" I like like I think that most people who who believe like the the normal i guess sensationalism view of things and like dispensational view of like when the things happen they believed when armageddon happens jesus is going to reign with the saints on the earth and and i was like actually i did notice and i said you know what it it's not really that clear that he's going to be anywhere particular on the earth like so so where's your answer i've heard i've heard people who are preterists say that the garden of eden is inside the earth and that's where he's at he's some other place so I've heard people talk about the North Pole again, like saying, is it possibly like this is why you can't go to certain places because Jesus and the saints are reigning from this place? Or what's your, what's your answer? So remember when, um, well, I'll tell you a few things. When when Jesus had the transfiguration, mm-hmm. right? Who did he appear with? Elijah and Moses. Moses. So where were they during this time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, the thief on the cross, right? When he got crucified, what did Jesus You'll tell him? He was going to be in paradise with him to that day. What does paradise mean in Hebrew? I don't know. What, what does it mean? Garden of Eden. Oh, okay. It legit means the garden, the Eden. It means Eden. Every verse in the Bible that uses the word paradise is talking about Eden. Like in Revelations, for example, what does God say to the saints who overcome tribulation? You will eat from the tree of life, mm-hmm. right? Where's the tree of life? In Eden. In Eden, in Eden mm-hmm. right? What comes down to the earth at the end of Revelation? A new Jerusalem. A new Jerusalem, yeah. Floating city of Jerusalem, right? Who's on this floating city? The saints, yeah. camp of the saints. Yeah, the bride of Christ. That's where they are. Uh, I currently, I believe, and that's where they were during the thousand year reign. I think New Jerusalem was too perfect to touch down on the ground, right? You see all these stories and, and mythologies about floating castles and flying cities, right? 
that are told throughout like medieval times and ancient times. And I think it's talking about New Jerusalem. I think some people were alive to see this thing, but they weren't part of the camp of the saints. So where is it now then? So I think it's in the third heaven. It's above the earth over the North Pole. In fact, they're telling us, uh, if you look up on the news right now, they say that the North Pole is going to be the next big battleground and possibly World War III, which is interesting, right? What is there to do in the North Pole? What are there to fight over? Fight uh, over Santa's, Santa and his toys. And his old. It, is, <laughs> yeah. it is interesting. We were joking about that, saying, isn't it kind of funny how, like, Santa, like, so what is this myth? Where did this mythology come that Santa's in the North Pole? Like, that's. That's weird. Like, why would he be like, why of all places would you predict I me? Mean, like, why would you say he was there? Unless there's something more significant about this place than just. And again, like, why? Like, really think about this guy. Like, again, being like faith, like a child and ask dumb questions like a child. Why do all the compasses point that way? <laughs> like, what? Like, what? No. What is it? It's not just ice there. I mean, there's got to be something significant yeah. about that place that causes the, the compasses all to point that way. Dude, I wonder if you just follow the compass, it'll lead you to the gates. <laughs> Maybe that's why compasses were created. It led them to make pilgrimage during this time, during this thousand year reign to the millennial kingdom, right? And also, I mean, think about the Northern Lights. Again, what do the secular tell us? How are the Northern Lights made? They tell us it's radiation. some kind of magnetic radiation, the right? Sun being but in the through. Bible, it says, yeah, yeah. In the Bible, it says there are certain colors or, or certain lights that go around God's throne. And this is Revelation chapter four, verse three. And he that sat and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald. All three colors are the exact colors of the northern lights. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty. So well, I believe this is coming from the New Jerusalem. And my belief about the end times. So you know how the Bible says in Revelations that uh, you know. They're going to surround the camp of the saints, the whole world. The devil's going to deceive all the nations again, bring them together, right? What kind of movies have we been shown concerning aliens, like Independence Day? What do they tell us? Some big old mothership comes down and, oh, no, it's here to destroy the earth. Let's all come together. Let's put our differences aside. There's an enemy right here. There's Thanos, right? And his mothership. Yeah, right. Doesn't New Jerusalem look like your typical UFO mothership? Well, isn't it? Big isn't it like, I mean, isn't it described in the Bible? It's It's a big cube. Right? Yeah, isn't cube. isn't that what New Jerusalem is? Because I'm not sure if it's a cube. They describe that all dimensions are equal, but that could be. It could possibly be be just like a, you know, like a. But you know what's interesting shape. is like you have like obviously all the cube stuff, and obviously most of us associate that with Saturn, you know. Yeah. But but what's what's sort of interesting is like you have like the like in Star Trek. If you guys are Trekkies at all, like they had that thing about the Borg. And the Borg was trying to assimilate people. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, like, mm -hmm. if that's their view of it, again, like, so always look at the bad guys in the in these science fiction mo movies, these these fantasy movies. They're more they're more like our God than than they are like the devil. The bad guys are. Yeah. So he's like, so they're yeah. trying to turn these people into these basically alive but really robotic people, and it's mm -hmm. like. That is actually what they're trying to say that that's what we would be doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because like, because we are obviously our, our, our brain, our free will has been sucked out because obviously we've got Christ now, you know, and yeah. we're doing these things that we don't want to, but like, cause God, we're doing it because our God's bad and he wants, cause he's mean, he wants us to do this. But like, that's the way they see it as like that we've been like reprogrammed and we're trying to make other people like us when, obviously we're like we're yeah. like literally it's like literally the opposite we're like we are like we are the ones trying to unplug people from the matrix like hey wake up this is this is not what you think it is yeah i mean the devil plays the game of inversion right all throughout scripture the again like i told you in the beginning the uh, example of the earth being still right and they tell us it's moving same thing goes for all this media right showing heroes or what they really are is like a Nephilim depiction. I talked about oh, yeah. it with Gary Wayne, how a lot of these heroes come from mythology, mm -hmm. right? Even Superman. His name is Cal yeah. L. Mm -hmm. And the L, that word means of the Lord, right? Like Michael, Mike L, mm -hmm. Gabriel, Gabriel mm -hmm. right? They're angels, they're fallen angels. And Iron Man in the comics, he's like, a, he's the Antichrist figure, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In the actual Iron Man com uh, comics, which is weird and interesting. So all the heroes, Thor and whatnot, they're the actual villains. Yeah. If you look at it through a perspective. Thor is straight up the story of the like yeah. Ezekiel 28. Like one of God's most beautiful creations. He 
He was too proud. He got cast out of got cast off out of the mountain of, Lord, of yeah. the Lord. We made a video, yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's that's who Thor is, and he's the good guy, and he's fighting against the guy who wants to snap his fingers and make half of humanity disappear. Who's coming down for like judgment? And it's like, yeah, I believe. Obviously, Brian and I talked about this a million times that that like they are setting the stage where, yeah, when that ship comes down, it's going to be a threat to humanity. But guess mm-hmm. what? They're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, they're like they're not wrong because if you if you do love this place, then yeah, this is not going to be this, this is not going to how you like to want the story to end. That's why Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world because it's literally not of this world, right? Yeah. And that's why I don't understand why, why so many people who believe the Bible are so obsessed with politics and trying to fix this place. Like, I'm not trying to fix this place. No. There's nothing to fix. You know, it's broken. It's going to stay broken. That's why God said, we're going to need a whole new earth. So so are we in the thousand year reign of Christ then, you think? And here, here's an interesting. No, no, no. No, you think we're past that? Yeah. We're in chapter 20 of Revelation. So yeah. That's my belief. But I'm open to being wrong. Again, I'm not like set in my belief, right? I'm always open yeah. to be wrong because I believe the truth is going to stand. So, so he, nobody should be scared of questioning. So there's anything. been no, so, so the, what we are wait, awaiting uh-huh. is Gog Magog. Is that like the final? Yes, you, so what? So the earth's so going to get destroyed, like, basically. That's the next thing happened. The next chapter is the earth gets destroyed by a comet that comes down and just wipes it all out. Or more like a mothership type. New Jerusalem. Well, so you, so what you would be saying, okay, so obviously again, like so, lay it all out there, okay. So if this place possibly was where the promised land was, and actually I'll have to ask you about that in a second, but like if like the Eden is possibly around the North Pole, and it mentions in the Book of Revelation that in chapter twenty it mentions that Gog Magog, Satan gathers them, they gather around the holy city, you know, they got around the saints. And then they're, and then eventually, obviously, God consumes them with fire. Are is that like? Do you believe that that is in not in what we believe to be Israel? Do you believe that to be like possibly like the North Pole? Yeah, or above it. I think that's when it's going to descend to the earth, and that's when people are like, "Oh shoot, we got a mothership," you know? Like, <laughs> let's all come together and wreck this thing. Right, like Independence Day. Oh, so you believe? So you, oh, so you believe it's going to be partly? It's it's like where the saints are is actually going to descend onto the earth, and then it's going to be surrounded by the armies. Um, and yeah, it's going to be shown all over the world, you know, like on the news. And, and again, that's what movies have been preparing us for. It's it's for us to see that this big floating thing that just came out of the sky. This is the enemy, right? This is going to destroy us, right? Like Independence Day, when all the countries got together, they settled their differences. And they started destroying all these motherships that are coming down. Do you think that that is what? Do you think that? Do you believe that that's what a lot of the space program stuff is? Is them trying to get, like, literally to where, where God and the saints are, like wherever Jesus and the saints are? Or do you? Or do you? Or do you, uh, th- or do you think, think that that's just a big old psyop where they're just trying to funnel money and and enrich themselves and make everyone. It, a deni- a God denier. It, it could be. I also believe they might be working on weapons because Satan gives them hope that, hey, we're going to win this thing. And obviously, a lot of people believe it, right? That's why they serve him. But even the devil knows his time is short. So he's, you know, misery loves company. He's going to take down as many people with him as possible. But no, mm-hmm. I think it, it probably is some kind of side. I don't, I don't, Space mm-hmm. Force is not legit. <laughs> they got a Star Trek symbol. <laughs> yeah. they, they do. Like I said, back to the Star Trek stuff. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'll mention something that in Revelation, I have a kind of a view that it's called Revelation for a reason. And so, like, I don't know, when you're reading the Bible, you get Revelation all the time. And Revelation will be something that you're reading and you'll be like, OK, so that's what it means. And then all of a sudden you read it again. You're like, and it also means this. And you're yeah. like, we're yeah. like, whoa. And so, like, my yeah. perspective I've gotten is that a lot of stuff in Revelation has already happened, but it's also going to happen again in some regard. Mm-hmm. And so that's why some of the things seem to be lining up with the stuff that's about to take place in revelation. It's because revelation is a revelating book. It means it's happened. It's going to happen again and it's going to happen again, yeah. even maybe. And so like, yeah. as we're looking through it, it's like, you know, this could mean this, but it could also just mean that basically it's, it's all taking place. And I know that there's this guy, uh, his name's Jack, Jack Horner, uh, amazing dude. I don't know if you've read about him, Jack, Jack Warner. He's like, yeah, he's a super awesome dude. Um, and he recently prophesied that the earth is going to get hit with a comet in 2029. 
uh and wormwood is what he thinks of uh, a pope a pophis yeah yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and so he 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 uh prophesied this and then he died so he just died and dude said this and he's been mm-hmm. saying it for a minute and then uh and he's prophesied a few other things they've all come to pass the things he said and so it's kind of like wow this dude's like pretty spot on but basically like he said hey 2029 a comet's going to hit the earth. And there you see all these people right now building these underground bunkers and setting up for underground stuff because there's a lot of elite people that I think kind of know this dude's right. A comet is going to hit. How are we going to protect ourselves? Let's build an underground bunker. And so all these people are like trying to go underground and all this stuff. Yeah. So it's very fascinating. But then at the same time, at the same time, like whatever's on the news, they want you to see it. Yeah. Right? yeah. If this mm-hmm. was, this would be more secret. I think if it's, I think this might be playing into the false futuristic eschatology because in Revelation, it talks about the kings of the earth hiding themselves in the mountains uh-huh. and the rocks. And so people are going to be like, look, they're building bunkers. The kings of the earth, you know, the elites are, are hiding themselves. Also, what's really interesting, and someone pointed this out, but I forgot the verse. In Revelation, it describes some of the armies of the earth, and it says they're on horseback with like helmets and weapons. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that does not sound like an army from 2023, you know, right. like a bunch of dudes right. on, on horseback. This is their spears. They'll use their spears in Burnham for fuel or something too. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And it's in Revelation. And another thing that's interesting, I don't understand how people, when they read Revelation, they believe none of it happened is in the first few chapters, John is literally writing letters to the seven churches, right? Mm-hmm. About what? I mean, destruction, Armageddon. And in these letters, he even tells them that, uh, I am your brother in the coming tribulation. Like, yeah. How is he his brother if he's not going to experience it with them? Right? Mm. Not experience Armageddon. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. It doesn't make sense that they're legit letters to actual churches, right? But we like to allegorize this like, oh, this is a metaphor for this kind of church in America today or this kind of church. And I think a lot of people are just upset at this idea that the second coming possibly already happened. Yeah, they missed it. And they're, they're like, yeah, they're well, not I, about I, it. I can, I can, I can, I can empathize with that because I mean, I think that it is like, I guess that's the, I guess that's where I should should ask you the question now because I think that that's where a lot of people, without a definitive answer on like, okay, so what are we supposed to be hoping for? Because like I thought that that's you know because like if we, if we really thought we we were going to see the Son of Man coming on us on the clouds mm-hmm. and we were going to be changed, like that obviously that is part of being a Christian is to hope mm-hmm. for that. You know, so like, yeah. so what, so what mm-hmm. is the hope in this scenario mm-hmm. that obviously we're, we're protect? I mean, obviously, you know, I believe that, you know, God, we're not appointed to God's wrath. If we're in Christ, we're not going to be burned up with the armies of Satan and that stuff. So, so what, so what is the view oh, in that oh. sense where it doesn't feel like there's a lot of, there's not a lot for the, the people in yeah. who, the people who are not saints in the millennial reign. I can like I just want to make something like very clear. This does not change what Jesus has done for us, right? He died for us on the cross for our sins, and what we are hoping for or, or, or uh, expecting is a new heaven, new earth. Right. right. That is our hope. Mm-hmm. So every generation, a- every generation has its place within the scriptures. And if you really think about it like this, throughout the Bible, like everybody has a place in it, right? So where are we in the scriptures? If let's say that this view that, uh, you know, Jesus returned already didn't happen whatsoever. We're not in the little season. We're still waiting, right? Where can we fit the last 2,000 years in the scriptures? Like, what happened? Because after the book of Jude, the book of Jude happened during Jesus' time, mm-hmm. right? And then comes Revelation. Where do we fit in into this category? And I've asked people this question, and they can't answer. I'm like, are we just like the lost children of history? Like, where's our place in the Bible? Like, right now, the last 2,000 years, all these generations, like, or if it's been 2,000 years, or maybe it's been 1,000 years. Or a little bit more since Jesus. Uh, I can give a I can give a pretty interesting answer to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean the uh, the there's two things. One is you know you well I'll mention this secondarily. You've heard of the orphan trains, right? The orphan trains where all I the have, children yeah. just showed up out of nowhere, and the Cabbage Patch Kids where all the children just showed up out of nowhere. And if you read in Revelations, mm-hmm. it talks about those that receive the mark will be resurrected. Okay, you get resurrected straight up. It says that happens. And so it's like all these kids showed up out of nowhere. And there was this part of our history where where people were just like seeing children popping out of nowhere. How do we not know that these people weren't the resurrected people that received the mark? A, okay, and that we are just the children 
of those of the res resurrected people that received the mark. Okay, like it, it's very possible yep. that that's what we could be. So I was <laughs> so I was actually thinking this. Though I was I, I should have brought this up earlier though. Back to the dark ages. So isn't it interesting? Like the way we're told about history is there's this this dark period that nothing really happened. Don't worry about it. No, it was boring back then. Anyways, they were just yeah. they were a bunch of just religious people like you trying to keep the science up. And then so the, the period after the Dark Ages was the Enlightenment, where you have the heliocentric stuff gets pushed. You get the idea of like this like atheistic secular worldview. And then eventually you have like things like evolution get pushed. And you're like, isn't that sort of interesting that all these things kind of like these dominoes just all fall right after that? I mean, that I think that that actually is a pretty decent argument, like that there was this major shift where everybody, there was nobody who didn't believe in God based. Well, I mean, obviously there was things people didn't believe in God, but I mean, like, yeah. not in a large scale, people believed in God. And then there was a time where people just like, just outright denial. And it was like a, just a tonal shift, like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that possibly, is that possibly when, the thing started to happen and obviously like the devil that is that when this, the devil short season really began right then where like there was there was no god the devil just you know like the greatest mm -hmm. trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world mm -hmm. he didn't exist and all that kind of stuff well, there's definitely mm -hmm. something missing because we've lost like the authority of christ somewhere along the line like the casting out of demons is like coming back right now like nobody's business and people are realizing it and it's like a waking up that's happening in the whole world right now and it's all over and people are like oh my gosh how did we not know these are demons where did we forget to cast these things out like how did we not know this is demonic like and it's just happening everywhere all at once and it says like in the end times it says you know there will be a great increase of knowledge it'll move on the earth like maybe that is the end times that they're talking about where the earth get we're about we might be the last section where the earth gets destroyed like we're not you know past the whole Millennial rain passed all that. The next thing that happens is the earth gets hit by a comet. It blows up and gets destroyed. Okay. And we're like in the remnants of stages of that. And it's like, it's like, dude, but that's what, you know, that's where it's, it's coming from. I think in a lot of ways, you know, I don't know. That's just my thought. <laughs> as we, as we begin to wrap this up. So like, yeah. So what would, what would you tell the people who obviously had never heard any of this before? Like, yeah, which you would like, what would you say as far as like, believing in christ what should you be telling people because obviously i think my me, myself personally when i first got on like tiktok and i started making videos it was all about it being the end times look like we got like the daniel beast statue in front of the un you got these all these markers for like a like a mark of the yeah. beast world currency but then you have like the one world religion um, stuff coming together people talking about a third temple like what like what would you say to people who are believe it's the end times as well and is it like yeah, what, what what message would you would you leave them with? I guess I'll leave a message for everybody, and that is to read scripture like a clean slate, pray to God, become like a child, and allow the spirit of truth to work through you. Right, allow it to yeah. guide you. It's not going to possess you and just download information into your mind. Uh -huh. That's why the Bible says, "Study to show yourself approved." Uh -huh. Meet God halfway. All throughout Scripture, you know, the patriarchs were told to meet God halfway. Moses had to climb a mountain to get the Ten uh -huh. Commandments. God didn't give uh -huh. it to him on the ground, right? So it's kind of like a, a metaphor for us to meet him halfway to do the work as well, mm. right? God will pave the way and we got to walk it, right? Mm -hmm. He will give us the door, right? Walk through. Brother, it was awesome having you on. Obviously, we're going to, there was, we only probably scratched the surface of this stuff. Tell people where they can find you at. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and all the same name, Alpha Talks. You can also find me on TikTok as well and on Instagram. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, absolutely, man. And obviously, we're gonna we'll include all your links in the in the in the description. But yeah, guys, this was great. I'm super excited to like for you guys to see this one. And obviously, let us know what you guys think in the comments section. Even if you hated hated this idea, <laughs> please please comment anyways. But again, what would you say? I love what you always say, Vitaly. When you say, uh, "Don't answer a matter until you fully hear it out," and then in Ecclesiasticus it says, "Examine the truth fully, then rebuke." Right? Yes. Don't so, rebuke first. Don't do something stupid before looking into it. Look into it. Examine it from every angle. Then you can rebuke it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, so you guys, please, please do that. And obviously, once again, we appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe. Yeah. Follow Alpha Talks. He's got some great, like, like I said, some of his videos about this are amazing. So you guys check that out. Anyways, from from decoding Babylon and Alpha Talks. See you guys. God bless you. Have a good night.
Have a good night. Later.